Years ago, before we saw zombies in every other movie, there was The Mummy. The 1959 version of The Mummy starred Peter Cushing, Grand Moff Tarkin of Star Wars, and Christopher Lee, Saruman of Lord of the Rings, and Count Dooku, Darth Tyrannus, in a later Star Wars series. The Mummy could, and did, kill. But man, did he move slow. Well, after 3,000 years in the ground, you'd be a little stiff too. The mummy needed Pilates. Most people know a few limited things about ancient Egypt. The mummy and mummies, King Tut, Cleopatra, two-dimensional drawings used as writing known as hieroglyphs, and that Egyptians walked around looking just like those ancient drawings. Okay, the last one isn't true. But in the 70s, Steve Martin had us believing that maybe they did, with his hit comedy song, King Tut. In the 80s, the Bangles had a hit with Walk Like an Egyptian. More than 2,000 years since the Egyptians were in power in the Mediterranean, the Egyptians still fascinate us. Not all, but a considerable number of Egyptian royals married their sibling. Actually, so did their priests. These two classes of people were considered, in the case of royalty, to be gods or godlike, and above the social constraints of everyday people. Priests being able to communicate with the gods were also considered to be above the petty restraints of the common people. Incestuous marriage was also thought to keep out pollution from commoners or lesser nobles and keep the royal bloodline pure. This is not as unusual as you might think. The famous King Philip II of Spanish Armada, 1556-1598 fame, was the product of an incestuous relationship, and many of the Habsburgs, especially of the Spanish line of the powerful European family, were products of incestuous unions between cousins. Philip's father, Charles V of Spain and Holy Roman Emperor, married his first cousin, Isabella of Portugal. Many of the Spanish Habsburgs displayed an enlarged lower jaw, a sign of mandibular prognathism, or as is commonly known, Habsburg jaw. Philip wore a beard to hide it. Many of his ancestors, descendants and family members had it, and women could not grow a beard. How do we know about Egyptian incest? In two ways. First, ancient Egyptian, Greek and Roman texts refer to it. Sister wife and brother husband were common terms, and they weren't terms of endearment or closeness. They were fact. If there weren't other accounts that substantiated this, we might think that maybe the ancient Greeks and Romans were insulting the older rival kingdom. For the practice of incest among royals and everyone else in Greece, and especially Rome, was frowned upon, unless you were sixth or seventh cousins. Did closer familial relations happen in Greece and Rome? For sure and there are a number of infamous cases of it in ancient Rome. But those were the exceptions rather than the rule. Ancient Egypt was different, however, going back as far at least as the famous King Tutankhamun, who reigned from 1332 BCE to 1323 BCE and was part of the long-lasting 18th dynasty, 1550 BCE to 1292 BCE, in the New Kingdom of Egypt. We'll tell you more about Tutankhamun, or King Tut, in a bit. But in addition to having one of the most glorious and preserved tombs of the ancient world, Tut and his relatives had their DNA tested. No, the Egyptians didn't possess some kind of advanced alien technology 3,000 years ago, like some people do believe. Their DNA was removed in 2010 by a team of German and Egyptian researchers. It turned out that Tut was the incestuous product of his father, the famous religious performing pharaoh Akhenaten, and his sister. Akhenaten, also known as Amenhotep, was also married to the famous queen Nefertiti, who may have ruled Egypt for a time after her husband's death and before Tut came of age. Also, Nefertiti was the mother of Tut's wife, Ankesanamun, which would make her Tut's half-sister. Birth defects are quite possible in a child born of a union between brother and sister, but perhaps not as high as they would be if the practice was carried out for many years, which it was in ancient Egypt. That's not to say that all royal Egyptians married their relatives or had children by them, but enough did to make it a thing, and Tutankhamun's body was evidence of that. The famous pharaoh had a club foot, a common disability among those whose parents are related, and bone necrosis, which restricts or blocks blood to various areas of the skeleton, especially the legs and feet. The necrosis may have been due to injury, not incest, but we'll tell you more about that in a moment. We know that Tut had a pretty face, at least judging from the sculptures on his sarcophagus or coffin, but from the neck down, not so pretty. 
Nefertiti, more formally known as Neferneferuata Nefertiti, is famous for being the wife of Akhenaten, who attempted to create a new branch of the Egyptian religion when he promoted the idea of a single god, Aten, the god of heat, or sometimes called the god of the sun. Unfortunately, Akhenaten was not remembered favorably in ancient Egypt because he promoted the idea that he was the personification of Aten on earth. Nefertiti was his wife and Tut's stepmother. We've already mentioned that she may have ruled the empire while Tut was still a young boy, but she's also so famous because of her most well-known statue. Nefertiti's beauty is apparent, even 3,000 years later, unlike many ancient statues still with their faces. The other Egyptian queen that everyone knows is Cleopatra, 69 BCE to 30 AD, or as she is formerly known, Cleopatra VII Philopater, Cleopatra the Father Beloved, which likely has normal and no incestuous nuance to it. Or, maybe not, she was wed to her much younger brother, Ptolemy XIII, and was also the product of an incestuous union between her father and his sister. In the popular series Rome, Cleopatra schemes with her lover, Julius Caesar, to have her brother-husband eliminated with her put on the throne. That never happened, but she did rule the country in all but name, for her brother was too young, and Cleopatra was well connected to the now dominant Romans, especially Caesar, and then his top general, Mark Antony. Incidentally, Cleopatra was part of the Ptolemy dynasty, who descended from one of Alexander the Great's generals. She was Greek. But unlike her ancestors, she not only spoke Greek, but Egyptian as well. Speaking of Cleopatra, it's well known that she and Antony took their own lives after losing the Battle of Actium at the hands of Octavian, Julius Caesar's nephew and adopted son. Shortly after, Octavian became Caesar Augustus. What you might not know is that along the southern French coast, especially in the city of Nice, you will see stone markers placed throughout the city on the order of Augustus. On these stone markers, you will see a chained crocodile under a palm tree, the symbol of Augustus's triumph over Egypt all those years ago. In addition, many ancient Roman coins survive in collections today, showing Rome's dominance of Egypt. If you die in the Sahara Desert and no human or animal finds you, there's a good chance you'll turn into a mummy. This is because the dry air will eventually stop the decomposition process. Don't be fooled, you'll still be dead and quite gross. And if the air stays dry long enough, the sand will eventually cover you, and you'll stay that way. However, that takes a long time, and doesn't involve the burial of the body in an illustriously prepared tomb inside a pyramid. One of the ideas behind mummification was that the dead person would appear in the afterlife as they did in life, not as a rotting horror movie mummy. Over the centuries, the ancient Egyptians perfected the art of mummification. It's as gross as you might think, so hang on tight. Everything you hear from this point on was probably accompanied by prayers, chants, or music, and likely a large contingent of priests, relatives, and guards. That being said, the body was placed in a cool, dry tomb and then had its brain removed. First, a long rod, much like a knitting needle, was shoved up the nasal cavity, through the sinus wall, and into the brain. Then the rod was thrust, probably hundreds of times, into the brain, chopping it apart like a cut-up scrambled egg. Pieces were then fished out by a hooked or looped rod, until all the brains were collected and put in a jar. Then, a hole was cut into the abdomen. Priests then reached in and pulled out the internal organs. Each was placed separately in earthen jars, sealed, and placed in the mummy's tomb. After all the organs were removed, the body was buried under a mound of salt, in this case, a particular type of salt called natron, which is common in the soils of the riverbanks of the eastern Mediterranean. The body was left undisturbed for 40 days and then wrapped in the famous linen dressing you see in the movies. In February 2023, discoveries were announced that suggest that ancient Egyptian embalmers, the people who did the mummification, had extensive knowledge of what compounds of oils and resins would best preserve the body and organs. Moreover, many of these oils came from outside Egypt, suggesting a far-flung trade and an educated search and study for the best compounds to preserve their important figures. After the linen and much ritual and prayer, a lifelike mask was placed over the head of the mummy and it was placed in its final coffin. Incidentally, it was not just pharaohs and their queens that were mummified. 
many other important Egyptians, from royal family members to regional governors, priests and generals, and many times their families were mummified. Tutankhamun's tomb was discovered in early 1923, having laid undisturbed for 3,000 years. Think of that for a moment. Tut was not the first ruler of Egypt, not by a long shot. Egyptian civilization went back 2,000 years before that. If you live in America and are tempted to call Mount Vernon or the Monticello old, think again. Even if you live in Europe, for example, in southern France, where milestones and aqueducts mark the Roman Empire, Egyptian civilization began 2,000 years before, when there was no Rome. When Tut's body and tomb were thoroughly examined in recent years, one of the things that became apparent was that some organs were missing from Tut's tomb and that there were signs on his body that he had met a violent end. Some people believe that Tut was injured while on a hunting party hunting hippos, a popular sport. Hippos were plentiful in the Nile at the time and have a notoriously bad temper. They can also stay submerged for five minutes and can be pretty hard to see among the reeds and murky waters of the Nile. In 2022, 500 people were killed by hippos. Sharks killed five. Hippos are no fun, not in ancient Egypt and not now. They're hungry, hungry hippos. Tut may have had the last laugh, however. Since 1923, when Henry Carter and his team discovered Tut's tomb in the Valley of the Kings, across from the one-time ancient capital of Thebes, there have been rumors of a curse placed on the tomb of Tutankhamun. Unfortunately, fiction sometimes is stranger than truth, and the curse of Tut is just that, fiction. No one has ever found any writing within the tomb or elsewhere among the ancient ruins that mention a curse on Tutankhamun or any other pharaoh. The so-called curse was an early 20th century version of clickbait, or a page-turner as it was known then. Four months after the discovery of Tut's tomb, one of Carter's partners, the prominent English Lord Carnarvon, died after a mosquito bite on top of an existing cut became severely infected and led to blood poisoning and pneumonia. Pure accident. Carnarvon died at 56, not exactly young for the time. Others in the Tut party also passed away, most seemingly within a short time of discovering Tut's tomb. However, an exhaustive study by the prestigious British Medical Journal showed that none of the 25 other people in the party died of anything related to their presence in Egypt, malaria, or sleeping sickness, for example, and all died within the average natural lifespan of people in their generation. Thanks for watching. We hope that you enjoyed this gruesome tale of mummies, mummies, and incest in ancient Egypt. Please like and subscribe to our growing channel, check out our great community on YouTube, and walk like an Egyptian.